today we're going to add on to um, our concept of logarithms. And um, logarithms are an efficient way to help us solve problems. And sometimes what we have to do is we have to use a logarithmic property, which is what we have up there. It says log base b of a to the x is the same thing as x equals log base b of a. And all that's happening in this property is if we look closely, we had an exponent in our part of our equation on the left. And we took that equation, that exponent, and we wrote it out in front of the logarithm. So I frequently say that we have a coefficient on the logarithm. So when we look at problem number 1a, when we have to simplify each of these using the logarithmic law that we just saw, we have log of x squared. What's going to happen is we're going to take this 2 there, and we're going to write it out in front. So this is going to become 2 log of x. By the way, what's the base of that logarithm? Jordan? It's 10. If the base is not written, it's 10. And that's just an aside there, but it's still an important uh, concept to know. But when we look at part B here, again, we're going to use our logarithm, logarithm law. And what's going to happen this time is we're going to take that value of 9, which is our exponent, and we're going to rewrite it out in front of the log. So it's going to be 9 log base 3 of x. Over here in part C, same idea. Taking this value of x, and we're going to write it out in front. So it's going to be, we can't, I can't see it anymore, but if I scoot that up a little bit, this is going to be x log base 2 of 100. So notice, it doesn't matter whether the exponent is a number or if the exponent is a variable. We can rewrite the logarithm without the exponent within the problem by making the coefficient. And we need to use that idea here to help us solve. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to follow these steps to solve this equation for the x equals 8. And the first step says to take the common log of both sides of this equation. Well, a common log is LOG. We take the common log of both sides because every calculator has it. The phone calculators don't tend to have it, but every real calculator, scientific or graphing, has that button. So we're going to take log of 4 the x equals log of 8. So there we took the common log of both sides of the equation. Second step, use our logarithmic law. And when we use our logarithmic law, what we said is we're going to take this value of x and we're going to write it out in front. So this is going to become x log 4 equals log 8. Third step. Isolate the variable by dividing both sides. So with x times log 4, the inverse operation of multiplying is going to be to divide both sides by log of 4. <coughs> and then finally, when we solve this, what happens is log 4 divided by log 4 is 1. That part cancels out. And we're still left with x. And then we have to type this in. And notice, do not round until the very end. I like to use my fraction button oftentimes, but I looked around a little bit to see the calculators. You don't have to. It's the log button. Log 8, close the parentheses, 
divided by log 4 and enter gives us 1.5. So we get x equals 1.5. The beauty of this logarithm uh, law is that it removes the variable from the exponent. We had to solve for x, but how do we figure it out when it's in the exponent? <laughs> and this law, in combination with the fact that the logarithm of base 10 is called our common logarithm, it allows us to solve for almost any exponential equation using our calculator. <coughs> When we look at problem number three, 5 to the x equals 18, we're going to follow the exact same steps. First step being, put a common log into both sides. So this is going to become log of 5 to the x equals log of 18. Step two, apply the logarithmic law. That means we need to look at our exponent here, which is an x. We're going to take that and we're going to write it out in front as a coefficient. So it's going to be x log 5 equals log 18. Well, it's x times log 5. The inverse operation of multiplying is dividing, so we're going to divide both sides by log 5. And once again, log 5 divided by log 5 cancels out to be 1. So we're left with x. And now we need to type this in. We're going to round our answer to the nearest thousand, which is three decimal spaces. And when we type it in, log of 18, close the parentheses, divided by log of 5, close the parentheses. You can use your fraction button, and when we press enter, we get our values in. People with an Inspire calculator you probably have to type in the 10, log base 10. But lastly here, what we do want to know is what actually is the answer. And we have to look at this 8 there in the fourth spot of our decimal to understand that we're going to round that 5 to 6. 8 is 5 or higher, which is why we round that up. And then I want to show you another little trick that can be helpful when we're um, checking our work, to check our work. So um, really what's happening here when we check our work is we're going to go back to the problem here. It said 5 to the x is 18. So what this is is it's 5 to our 1.796 equals 18. But I had you write that down there, but here's how you can use your calculator to help you. If you still have that number in your calculator, you can go 5, caret, and then second, the negative button. That gets you to the A and S on your calculator. 5, caret, second, negative button, what it does is it carries this number down and puts it in that exponent, and then when we press enter, look what we get, exactly what we wanted it to get. If you round it, if you do 5 to the 1.796, you're going to be close, which is what it should be, because you round it. Anyway, it's a nice little technique, especially when you're taking a test or a quiz.
If we look at 100 equals 4 to the x, we're going to do the same thing. Once again, it is. What is common log in both sides of our equation? Log of 100 equals log of 4 to the x. Second step. Apply the logarithm logarithm law, which is to bring that out in front. So we have log of 100 equals x log of 4. So well, now with x times the log of 4, our inverse operation is to divide. <coughs> so we're going to divide by log of 4. Divide by log of 4. The log of 4 is cancelled out, and we'll not look up x. And then we need to type it in. Log of 100. Log. I'll use the fraction book this time. Log of 100. Close the parentheses. Divided by log of 4. Close the parentheses. And once we do that, we end up with 3.3219. We got around to the nearest thousand. Round to the nearest thousand. So when we look at this, we've got a nine here. Hard for me to underline. And that's going to determine the fact that our 3.322 is going to be our value for x. Nine is five or greater, so we have to round up on that. And we can check. And all that we need to do to check is we're going to take that value, it's 100, equals 4 to the 3.322. So 4 caret second negative, 4 to our answer, gives us 100. If you round it, it's going to be close. It's not going to be quite. But if you have that button, why not learn to use it? It's one of my favorites to use. <coughs> so if we switch over here to problem number four. Thank you. Switch over here to number four. The process is still the same. It's a little bit more complicated because our exponent is not just x. So the process is still going to be the same. We are going to put a common log into both sides of the equation. And it's going to be 1.03 to the 2x and log of 2. Step 2. Use the logarithm law. We're going to take this 2x. I'm going to bring it out in front. This is going to be 2x log <coughs> of 1.03 equals log of 2. But here's where we need to be careful with our calculators. The process is still the same. This is 2x times the log of 1.03. So the inverse operation of multiplication is division. We're going to divide by the log of 1.03. And this part cancels out. We end up with 2x equals, well, <coughs> I'm going to round here for a minute. But don't take the number out of your calculator. 
So when we type it in, we've got log of 2, log of 2, divided by log of 1.03. And then enter. That gives us our number. And we can write down that number, but don't take that number out of your calculator. We don't want to round until the very end. And it's roughly 23.449. That's not exact. 23.449. And I know that that's rounded. But we still have that number in the calculator. What we need to do to finish is it's 2 times x. Our inverse operation is to divide both sides by 2. So now we're going to take that number that's in our calculator and we're going to divide by 2. So all that you have to do is press divide. It'll take that answer, divide by 2, and now we're going to get our value here of 11. 11.725. When we look at this 8 here, that's going to cause us to round that 4 up to a 5. So we had to multiply in that exponent. By the way, we could check our work while I'm thinking of it, or before I forget, our function was 1.03, 1.03 to the 2 times second negative button, and notice what happens. We get 2, which is exactly what we want to. We know that we already did the problem right. But we had to multiply with that exponent. It doesn't matter. In this particular problem, we're going to divide. It's x divided by 3 in our exponent. <coughs> but the process doesn't change. We're going to put a common log rhythm in on each side of the equation. So it's log of 9 to the x over 3 equals log of 13. Second step, use the logarithm log here. So that means we're going to have x divided by 3 over here in front. And then we've got our logarithm on both sides. Our log of 9 now equals log of 13. We don't want to round to the very end. We just need to keep our number in our calculator. It's x divided by 3 times log of 9. So our inverse operation is going to be to divide by log of 9. <coughs> and the log of 9's cancel out, and we still have x over 3. We need to type in this right side of the equation, the log of 13 divided by log of 9. Log of 13 divided by log of 9. Make sure you close your parentheses. And I'm going to round to write down that number, but we're not going to round until the very end. Just leave that number in your calculator. We get 1.167. We want to solve for x, and this says x divided by 3. What's the inverse operation, Matthew? We're going to multiply. So we're going to multiply by 3 here, and we're going to multiply by 3 here. And our 3's cancel out. Remember, the number's still in our calculator, so now we're going to multiply by 3. We didn't round. Now we have our answer here that we do want to round. We've got 3.502. We look at the zero here, which means that our two is going to remain the same. It's going to be x equals 
zero two. And we could check that in our calculator if we needed to. But in the interest of time, we'll keep moving forward here. And it's still the same process. Here we've got to solve um, our exponential expressions. And we went around to the nearest thousand, but we have to use some of our old strategies for solving equations. So as you look at this equation here, what do you think would be our first step? Well, our first step is going to be to add 3 to both sides of the equation. And the reason that we're doing that is because when we solve an equation, we always want to isolate the variable as much as possible. So if we move the 3 away from this, we have 4 times 2 to the x equals 1. 17 plus 3. Well, it's 4 times 2 to the x. Our opposite operation, then, or our inverse operation, is to divide both sides by 4. And we end up with 2 to the x equals 5. Looks pretty familiar in terms of what we've been working with so far. Because now what's going to happen that we are going to put our common log into the equation for both sides. So we've got log of 2 to the x equals log to the 5. Notice I took out the parentheses. We didn't have to. But then our next step is to use the logarithm law to help us solve. So we're going to take this x and we're going to write it out in front. So we get x, log of 2, equals log of 5, and we want to solve. x multiplied by log of 2, the inverse operation is to divide by log of 2. And that's what we're going to type into a calculator. We're going to end up with x equals log of 5 divided by log of 2. Log of 5 divided by log of 2. And make sure that you're closing the parentheses. That's important. And when we do, we get 2.3219. We're going to have to round a little bit. So we look at the 9 here. Look at the 9. And that 9 is going to determine the fact that we need to um, round that 1 up to 2. So it's 2, like 3, 2, 2. You could check that to make sure that it worked in your calculator. So as we continue here, we've got a couple of things that are really important. We're using common logs to help us solve. We need to know that we need to isolate the variable when we're solving for an <coughs> equation. And um, so when we look at this next one, before we can use our common log, we need to isolate what we can in our equation. And as we look at this, it says 11 multiplied by 3 to the x equals 44. Well, the opposite operation or the inverse operation of multiplication is division. If we divide both sides by 11, we end up with 3 to the x equals 4. And now that we have our equation in this format, you might start to think that I'm sounding like a broken record because we're going to put a common log into both sides. It's log of 3 to the x equals log of 4. 
use our logarithmic law, which means we're going to carry this x and make it a coefficient. So it's going to be x log 3 equals log of 4. It's x times log of 3. The inverse operation is 2 to the log of 3. Log of 3 divided by log of 3 cancels out. It cancels out to be a 1. So when we come over here and we type this into our calculator, log of 4, log of 4, close the parentheses, divided by log of 3, close the parentheses, gives us 1.2618, and we need to look and see how we're going to round that. Well, 2618, we're going to look at the 8 to determine the fact that we're going to have to round that 1. So we end up with 1, with 2, 6, 2. But I do want to remind you here that we can check this. When we go back into our calculator, we can take 11 times um, 3 to the x. But instead of to the x, we can do second in the negative button will get us to the answer. It's carrying down that 1.26185950. And when we press enter, we get 44. So we're still able to check that. We know that our answer is right before we turn in a homework paper, or before we turn in a quiz, or before we turn in the test. So over here on letter C, uh, we've got five to the or seventeen times five to the x equals four. Once again, we still want to isolate, and in order to do that, we divide both sides by seventeen. So we get five to the x equals four divided by seventeen. If you type in four divided by seventeen. We get that. There's no real reason to use that number. We can simply leave this value over here as 4 17ths. Once we get it in this form, as we have on all of our problems today, <coughs> we're going to put in a log. It's 5 to the x, and it's 4 seventeenths this time. And I'm going to put the parentheses in there because we're probably going to need parentheses when we type it in our calculator. Our next step is to use our law, which is to take that x out here in front. So we get x log 5 equals log of 4 seventeenths. And it's x times log 5. So the inverse operation is to divide by log 5. And if we divide by log 5 here, then we need to divide by log 5 here on the right side. So we end up with x equals. When we type it in, log, log of 4 divided by 17, close the parentheses, divided by log of 5, log of 5, close the parentheses, and then when we press equals, we get our value here of negative 0 0.899. We've got a zero here, so when we round, we don't have to do, we don't have to round up anymore.
So um, what if we we're asked to solve an exponential equation with the number e in there? It says, let's give those a shot. Recall you may want to use the natural logarithm here. Natural logarithm abbreviated ln, and we're still going to round to the nearest thousand. So the only difference on the problems here is that instead of putting log into both sides, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to put ln natural logarithm of e to the x equals natural log of 14. That's the only different step from what we did on the front page of our notes. Because the next step is going to be to use the logarithm law, which means that we're going to take this x and we're going to carry it out in front. So this is going to be x times the natural log of e equals the natural log of 14. We want to solve for x. And this is x times the natural log of e. So the inverse operation is going to be to divide by the natural log of e. We're going to divide both sides by the natural log of e. Natural log of e divided by natural log of e, that cancels out to be 1. And we're left with x equals. And then we can put this in our calculator. Remember that the natural log is the farthest to the left. It's the third button up. It goes on, then store, then ln. So it's going to be natural log of 14. Close the parentheses. Divided by natural log of e. And the e button is second in the division bar. On the inspires, you probably have to do e to the first power. But regardless, when we press enter, we get our value here, and we want to round this to the nearest thousand. So looking over here, we get a zero in the fourth position. That means that our nine is not going to change. We get 2.639. <coughs> And you can still check this here. To check it on your calculator, we would do second ln. So we had to still use the ln button, but we had to press second. So that gives us e to the. And then we can move this value down here. So we can say second and negative. That transfers the answer in there. And when we press equal, sure enough, we get 14. One more here to finish. Just like 5A. Karen? So just like 5A, example 5A, what we need to do to solve this is we need to isolate the variable as much as possible. So when we isolate the variable, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. And we end up with 2 e to the x equals 26. Well, we almost have the variable isolated. Now it's 2 times e to the x. The opposite operation is going to be to divide both sides by 2. And we get e to the x equals 13. 26 divided by 2 is 13. Now that we have this, then we can solve this equation with our natural logarithms. We're going to put ln into both sides of the equation and instead of common log, it's going to be ln of e to the x equals ln of 13. And then we're going to use our logarithm law. We're going to take this value of x, we're going to write it out in front, and we're going to get x 
natural log of e equals natural log of 13. Well, we're almost finished now because this is x multiplied by natural log of e. The opposite operation, the inverse operation, is to divide by natural log of e. When we do, the natural logs of e's cancel out. And we can type this into our calculator now to finish. Natural log of 13 divided by natural log of e. And remember, when we round, we're going to end up with 2.565 because 9 is 5 or greater, which is going to cause that 4 to move up to 5.